Good afternoon. Today is December 22nd, 2015. My name is Edna Sussman. I'm a reference librarian here at the Half Hollow Hills Community Library. We're interviewing Harold S. Stullbaum, a Korean War veteran as part of the Army Medical Corps, as part of our Veterans Testimonial Project and in collaboration with the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. Thank you so much, Hal, for being here today and participating in our project. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Hal, where and when were you born? I was born in Queens, Corona, Queens, in 1927. And who were your parents? What did they do and what were their names? Uh, my father's name is Samuel. Uh, he came here when he was two years old from Russia. My mother was born here and uh, lived just about all my uh, life with them in Queens, mm -hmm. in Corona and Elmhurst. Did you have any siblings? I have a brother that's uh, seven or eight years older mm -hmm. than I am. Uh, he was in the Army. He was? At he the was. same time as you? Oh, no, okay. no. He was in the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a dentist, oh. and he was going to dental school when the Army took over. and. Uh, that's how he got into the army. And he served as a dentist in the army. Yes, he did. Uh, uh -huh. In abroad, and, or and as soon as he got to uh, Europe, the Germans gave up. Oh. So. <laughs> oh, that's fortunate, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. it was actually at the end of the war. I see. Uh, what did your parents do in Queens? Um, my father's family had a a business in Corona. Uh, initially, they had a. Uh, the shop where they made men's shirts, mm -hmm. and then after that they started making women's dresses and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the bad times, in the 20s, uh, it really did not support the family. So my father went out and uh, became a insurance salesman, mm -hmm. having no experience or anything of this sort, and did very well. Oh, good. Yeah. Did your mom work or? No, well, my mom was always at home. Housewife. With the two kids, mm -hmm. yeah. So what were you doing before you entered the service? What what year did you enter? 50? 1950. Okay. Uh, I had just graduated from college. Where? Which? Uh, NYU as a pre-dent student with a psych major. Mm -hmm. And uh, not knowing exactly what I wanted to do. But for years I worked as a waiter up in the Catskills. So I went back to the Catskills that summer mm -hmm. and worked up there and uh, received my draft notice oh. while I was away. So they gave me an extra three months and when I came back to the city, October 18th was the day I was inducted. Mm -hmm. So there was no choice of which branch? They, it was, no. Who was drafting you the Army? The Army, mm -hmm. yeah. Did, uh, so you were drafted. Um, what happened when you departed from training camp and during your early days of training? Uh, my, my first experience in the Army <laughs> was uh, leaving Whitehall Street uh, in a bus, and they could not find my papers at that time, so they were holding up the bus. I didn't <laughs> want them to hold up the bus, so let them go. But we, they held up the bus, they found the papers, and we went up to Fort Devon in Massachusetts. Uh -huh. And uh, got up there kind of late because of my papers, and we stopped to help uh, another bus on the way <laughs> of senior citizens way back then that had broken down. So uh, we got into camp after midnight, <laughs> and uh, nobody was happy to see us since they had to stay late. and. Uh, was it a bus full of recruits? Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, my first meal in the Army was sometime after midnight, was a cold pork chop. And I had never eaten pork before that. Oh, no. So it was interesting. <laughs> Did you like it? A cold pork chop you never like. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I spent 10 days up in Fort Devens. And uh, you go through the usual induction with the injections and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
they really did not know what to do with us. Why? Uh, I mean, you march so much and so forth and so on. So part of our duty during the day was to clean up the area. Oh. But we were told not to pick up more than one leaf at a time since they had so many men and so few leaves. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, Wait, weren't you supposed to be trained in gunnery or uh, the, the, the first ten days is sort of orientation. Oh. Then they sent a group of us down to Fort Dix where I had my basic training. Oh. And uh, the bus went through New York City. We all wanted to get off, but of course not. And I had my basic training in Fort Dix. Okay. Do, um, do you recall your instructors, or what were they like? Um, no, nobody really stands out okay. in basic training. I could not understand why they would get us up at 3 or 4 in the morning, and we go out and do push-ups. And in uh, November and December, the ground is frozen. Oh. So you're doing push-ups on you know, frozen ground or icy mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't? Really, it, it wasn't. Uh, it was a good group of men, nearly all from New York City, and all, uh, or many or most, college graduates. Really? So we all got along very well. Yeah. How did you adapt to military life, the food and the barracks, social life? Uh, Food-wise, I was always hungry. Oh. I was a big bread eater, and they gave you one slice of bread. Oh. Um, I was in, after working as a waiter, I used to lose weight up there because we worked seven days a week mm -hmm. and uh, had an active social life. Uh, so I came back trim mm -hmm. and gained some weight in basic training. Uh -huh. So I was... As hungry as I may have been, I, I ate well. Yeah. Maybe you also, you were so active, so you bulked up a little bit. It maybe so, uh, Exercising. Yeah. yeah. Did you receive any specialized training, and if so, what? Uh, they gave us a lot of testing in Fort Dix. Uh, apparently, I did well, and then was sent down to Fort, gee whiz, uh, to a camp outside of Washington, D.C. Oh, for further testing, and there they treated us very well. Mm -hmm. um, the only negative thing about that experience was from the barracks we would look out, <coughs> excuse me, and we saw all the crosses from the cemetery. Oh. Oh. And um, it's a little discouraging. This is not what you want to see, you know, starting off in the army, mm -hmm. knowing that they were sending over ninety percent of the men after. Uh, basic training. Is that right? Wow. Because they were short of people. Oh. Uh, basic training normally at that time was eight weeks. We only had six, mm -hmm. and then they sent us down to Washington, D.C. Because they really months. needed, they, they shortened the training because they really needed they, personnel? They really needed specialists, I guess, I yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, oh. and, and down there, I was given a choice, which you don't hear much about in the Army, of... Uh, be becoming a uh, dental assistant, mm -hmm. and I was not interested really in dentistry. Oh, but you went to that? I was pre-dent because I didn't know what else to major oh, in at that time. But then there's a choice of psychological warfare, mm -hmm. and quite honestly, I was against the war mm -hmm. in Korea. I didn't want that. They gave me a few other choices, and one was clinical psychology, mm -hmm. which stuck my fancy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they said, okay, we'll send you to school, and uh, where would you like to be stationed? Oh, wow, a choice. Great. Right? Yeah. I picked a hospital in the in-town gap as close to New York as possible. What was it called? Where? Indian Town Gap. Oh, that's in New York? Uh, no, that was in Pennsylvania, I think. Oh. Uh, that was the closest to New York. But then when they called out my name, and they said I was going to Fort Sam, and no idea where that was. And even though my choice was close to New York, I ended up in Texas. Oh, wow. So this was for school, for clinical psychology? This was for school. Uh -huh. uh, Fort Sam Houston in Texas uh, is the Army Medical Corps. Mm -hmm. 
and I went to school down there for three months. Three months. Did and you already, you said you had some courses in college in psychology? I was a major in, you were. in psychology. Oh, is that, that why they kind of gave you that choice? Yeah, okay. yeah. But NYU was a good school. Mm -hmm. The courses I had in the, in the Army were really outstanding. Really? Hmm. We were, you know, basically eight or ten hours a day. Mm -hmm. The instructors were very good. Mm -hmm. The whole atmosphere was extremely positive. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a real good experience. Were you being trained to, you had a bachelor's degree already. Yes. So this training was to get you in a position with the Army, but not another degree, right? It wasn't. No, no. Uh, all along my training, the two years I was in, uh, they kept offering me the possibility to go to um, officer's training school, oh. which meant I would have to sign up for four years. More. For, More. Uh-huh. And uh, I turned it down all the time. You did? Why? So I never became an officer, oh. although I was doing the same work that they were doing. And um, I got out in two years and two days. Was that the rationale? You just you didn't want to spend the time in. I did not want to be in the army, basically. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So after the basic training, then after Texas, where did you go? Uh, I went to a mental health facility in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, uh -huh. and. Uh, there we were testing people to be discharged from the Army. There was a whole group of men that tried to enlist in the Army and did not qualify mm -hmm. there through the Army testing. Mm -hmm. But they found out if they joined the National Guard, then they could get into the Army that way. Oh. And these were men that should not be in the Army. Mm -hmm. They had various difficulties, retardation and so forth. Oh. So our job at that point was to test these individuals mm -hmm. and discharge them, or mm -hmm. get them discharged. Had they served at all? Uh, they were in only a few months. Oh, I see. Yeah. That was, where was that again? Fort Sam, ja uh, uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. South Carolina. How long were you there? Uh, three months. Yes. And then? And then I was sent to Camp Atterbury, Indiana. Uh, the hospital there was a huge hospital, 1,500 beds, wow. half orthopedic and half psychiatric. Mm -hmm. And we had three or four closed wards, and we had patients such as privates, as well as, I think the, there was a, a major and a few other mm -hmm. officers there too. It was and, a military, patients. military hospital, military just, just for servicemen. Yes. Or in their families, too, or? Uh, no, it was only for servicemen. Uh -huh. So in Indiana, how long were you at that hospital? I was there until I was di uh, discharged about 19 months later. Oh, 52. Roughly, uh -huh. yeah. Wow. Huh. Um, so, what, so you t actually treated some of the patients? We, we, we did psychotherapy. Uh, sometimes under supervision, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of psychological testing mm -hmm. uh, in order to either have these men discharged from the Army and go off to the VA or stay in the Army, as many did. Or be sent back to the war, or no? Um, if they stayed in the Army, I really have no idea where they went after oh, that. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it was a very good experience. Really? A very healthy uh, life, uh, meaningful. Uh, the people in the hospital, the staff, mm -hmm. the nurses were all excellent. Mm -hmm. And they were all Army personnel. Oh, okay. Nurses too. Yeah. Where did you live? Like on a base or? We lived in a ward in the hospital. Really? Yeah. Oh. So they had one whole section where we lived. You weren't married at that time? No, I was single. Uh -huh. um, was going out with a nurse, uh -huh. which I was not supposed to. Oh, really? Since they... I'm, I was a, a non-commissioned, not non-commissioned, 
But I was a regular soldier, and nurses are officers. Oh. And you're not supposed to go out with an officer. Right. But it was very enjoyable. So you kept it on the, you kept it low-key? Uh, basically, everybody knew. Oh, they did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, again, it was a professional staff, mm -hmm. and we all worked very well together. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I'd like to mention, though, is the army, the war was going on in Korea, and the army was able to get men from the first front line in Korea back to Indiana, where we were in the hospital, within 24 hours. No kidding, wow. So, going way back then, mm -hmm. the army did a marvelous job. How did they, they flew them, I guess? It was, it was a AVAC that would fly in. Wow. Whether they made it in one stop or not, I don't, I don't recall. But uh, that's amazing at that to time. have a guy from the front lines back in Indiana in the middle of the country mm -hmm. in 24 hours is outstanding. Yeah. So you saw all types of injuries? I mean, uh, we saw mainly psychological problems. Uh -huh. uh, the hospital, as I said, was half orthopedic. Oh, yeah. So you saw a lot of men, you know, on crutches and so forth and so mm -hmm. on. But our whole wing was psychological. And those psychological issues were caused by the war, by being in the service. Yes, and the theory was that no matter who you are, if you're under enough pressure, you will crack. Mm -hmm. And basically this is it. Some of these guys were not able to take the pressure, mm -hmm. and some of them were there a long time, or a relatively long time. And uh, you have no idea if it's going to happen to you or not. Yeah. But uh, the Army treated these men very well. Really? Yeah. So what kind of friendships and camaraderie did you form while serving, and with whom? Um, there were a few men from New York, hmm. uh, from Long Island, and uh, I continued to see them. Really? For many years. Uh -huh. I should see them now. <laughs> were they, they were um, on staff or patients? They were on staff, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. And um, once a month they would uh, have men shipped overseas from the hospital. Staff? Staff. So that when there was a need, and it could be as many as 12 or 14 or 16, uh, they would pick men, I don't know how, to go over to Korea. And when you went over there, you did not go over as a psychologist but you went over as a rifleman. No kidding. So that many of the men, including myself, had very little training mm -hmm. in six weeks in basic training. Sure. And nobody, of course, was very willing to go. Mm -hmm. But if you had your number called, you went, of course. Wow. And there was one very interesting situation. Uh, one of the men I was very friendly with uh, had a wife and an infant and she was living nearby, or they were living off base. And his name was called to go over to Korea. And one of the other men we were working with volunteered to go in his place. Oh my gosh. And you say, why, you know? And he said, well, he has a wife, a baby, and so forth. Wow. So these were... Two that was allowed? Was very they, friendly with. they allowed him to go in his st yeah. stead? Really? Yeah. They, yeah, did? they did? Wow. Do you so know, what did he, are you still in touch with both of them? Uh, I was in touch with one up until a few years ago, mm -hmm. also living on Long Island. Hmm. So he made it back from... Yes, he made it back. Wow. That's amazing. But you say you're volunteering your life, you know? Yes, yes. You understand the other guy has a wife and a child, we were single. Mm -hmm. uh, Wow. How did you stay in touch with family and friends back home? Um, the fellow that had a wife and a baby, whenever we had a long weekend, would drive home. From Indiana? From Indiana. I think it was like 18 hours. I went to school in Indiana from Syracuse. Oh, okay. It was a 12-hour drive, at, yeah. you know, in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, huh. Being in a car with an infant oh. that's not toilet trained for, I don't know, 16 or 18 hours. 
was quite an ordeal, but sure. we were able to get home. So he was from New York? Yeah. The two other fellows were from they New York. They were? Yeah. Wow. What part of Indiana? Do you remember the town it was in? Uh, we were 30 miles south of Indianapolis. Oh. Uh, near Brown County Park. Mm -hmm. As I used to go there quite a bit. It's north of Bloomington. Yes, north of Bloomington. That's where I went, Bloomington. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's a nice part of the country. It's beautiful. Yes, it was very nice. Hmm. Um, so you stayed in touch with your family and your friends' uh, family. Yeah. Uh, when I was in basic training <laughs> in Fort Dix, uh, my family came to visit on weekends. Oh, really? Nice. And uh, well, on Sunday. And uh, I guess it was around the time of Passover, and my mother came. Uh, to visit. Yeah, that must have been nice to have them visit. Yes. Um, but they, they came with gefilte fish. Really? <laughs> wow. Did she used to make it? Did she yeah. make a filter dish? Wow. Yes. Now, in Indiana, um, did you have time off? Or was it like a five-day week, or you got what did you do um, for recreation? It was either a five or six-day week. I forgot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we were free to leave the base, mm -hmm. and we went to Indianapolis. And were treated very well by the people that we met there, really? and so forth. For one of the Jewish holidays, we were invited by a family that owned a Chevrolet dealership. Mm -hmm. So we were invited over there for the holidays. Oh, nice. Oh, it was so nice. nice. And it's so surprising because apparently he was fairly well-to-do, mm -hmm. and they would ring a little bell and the maid would come in. <laughs> Not exactly what I was used to. Right, right. <laughs> well, I'm finding more and more back then during World War II for sure, but Korean conflict too, there were quite a lot of Jewish servicemen. There's, I think they're fewer now. Uh, I don't... Well, well, now it's a volunteer army. Right, maybe you that's know, at why. At that time it was not. It was not, maybe that's why. So that uh, everybody went. Yeah, I mean, and to the point where... A couple have told me that they they felt uncomfortable, just uh, just not discriminated against, but not treated as nicely because of their religion. Um, you didn't have that experience. Basically, in in uh, Fort Dix, most of us were from New York, mm -hmm. so with the New York population, mm -hmm. there was no, no feeling of discrimination. In Indiana. Um, if there was any, it wasn't very great or very upsetting in good. any way. Good. Uh, in South Carolina, I felt the same way. I felt That's comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to go out on weekends and so forth. Mm -hmm. That's great. Where were you when the war ended? Still in Indiana then? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, I was discharged before the war ended. You were. Oh yeah, the war ended. I think in '54. Oh, that's right. You were there and in 1952. Yeah. Okay. So I was actually, um, I forgot about this, I was actually drafted for 18 months. Hmm. And after I was in the Army for six months, they extended us to 24 months. Oh, wow. First time I really got drunk. <laughs> really? So you weren't keen on staying that lo longer either? No, no. <laughs> what, the usual draftee would be 18 months? Initially, the uh, original was 18 months. Oh, and then after we were in the Army, I don't know how long, they extended another six months, hmm. which is a shock because you're counting down. Sure. I'm getting out on yeah. such a date, and all of a sudden, More. it's gone. It's gone. You know. Wow. Your family must have been disappointed. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I tried to, to convince my mother I was safer in Indiana true. since she was in New York. You know? Probably true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How were you received... Uh, by family and friends when you returned home? Um, it's, it's really interesting. My father worked for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, mm -hmm. and uh, he was an assistant manager, and uh, there was discrimination in the insurance business at that time, mm -hmm. 
as well as in the banking industry. And uh, he found out that uh, the home office, which was in New York City, had a psychology department. Huh. And uh, I was home five days and found myself working at the Metropolitan Life no kidding. as a psychologist, a uh, completely different field. Sure. Uh, but most guys taking off a few months and not doing anything, yeah, five days later, I'm, I'm working, you know. That's amazing. So it was one Madison Avenue. So wait, so what, what, in that position, what did you do? They had a psychological staff, uh, two men who had their doctorates, and there were four of us who did not. Mm -hmm. And we, we were constructing psychological tests for hiring individuals, huh. as well as promotion and so forth. Hmm. So it, that uh, it was a completely different field. Yeah. Psychology has dozens of different areas. So uh, we were doing the test construction. Oh, I see. Which was very good. Along with that, I was able to get the GI, the GI Bill. Oh, yeah. So that uh, I would work at the Metropolitan in two days a week. I would take off at 4 o'clock, run down to NYU, and, oh, wow. and I was going to school three quarter time. Nice. For what? Going to NYU. For a master's? I was working toward my master's and working toward a doctorate. In psychology? In psychology. Oh, nice. So uh, under the GI Bill, I had 120 some odd credits, <laughs> uh, which the Army was paying for. Nice. And I was working full time, and NYU being close to the Metropolitan, uh, just worked That's out great. Really very well. Yep. Yeah. Um, I meant to ask you before that, before this, you go on. How did you return home from Indiana? From Indiana, they flew you. The army flew you home, or by train, <laughs> or do you remember? I really don't remember. I think by train. By train. Yeah. Um, and adjusting to civilian life was, you were pretty good. You got a job pretty quickly. It was very easy. I had a job, which was an excellent job. Uh -huh. uh, went to work, uh, you know, taking the uh, subway mm -hmm. and so forth. I lived in Queens at that time. Did you go in with your dad? Was no, he... no, no. My father worked out in uh, Jackson Heights. Oh, I see. Different. And uh, he, he's a salesman out in the field. I see. I was working in the home office. Got it. Um, did, have you remained in contact? You said you did with a few of your fellow veterans. Yes. Yeah. Are you a member of any veterans organizations? Actually not. Mm. No. Now, For a while I was, a, I was part of the Jewish War Veterans, mm -hmm. but uh, I let that go. Um, now when you went back to school for your master's and doctor, did you, you finish that? You got I finished my master's. Mm -hmm and got everything toward the doctorate except the dissertation, mm -hmm. which uh, I feel was very upsetting. Well, I still get upset about it because NYU was a very difficult school to go through. Right, I can imagine. They gave no support whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very difficult to get a sponsor for your doctorate, for your, your, your dissertation. Really? And... Uh, I had one man that was a sponsor who was excellent and passed away in his 30s. Um, I had another uh, sponsor who was a female that uh, never really was interested in working with me, but uh, sort of was there, but was not there. Mm -hmm. And you need a lot of support. I had another sponsor that uh, got divorced and went to Europe, so he left. And then there was a fourth sponsor that said, gee, you're married and you have a child, chances of you finishing your doctorate is slight. And that happened to be true. Wait a minute, we, we didn't get when you married in the scheme of things. We <laughs> well, missed that, that part. Um, when you got back from the Army and then a few months later you got the job. And yeah, I wasn't married for quite some time. Um, I was married in 61, so I was discharged in 58, in uh, Two. 
52. Uh, 52. And um, after coming back and working at the, at the Metropolitan, I still worked up in the Catskills on the weekends. Oh, you did? As a waiter. And then found that was kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. So I was on the ath athletic staff. And uh, where in the Catskills? In the Catskills uh -huh. at the hotel uh -huh. for the on the weekends, and uh, worked in a marvelous hotel with a marvelous owner and so forth. So I felt like part of the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> they catered to single people, mm -hmm. and there was always a shortage of men. Mm -hmm. So it was a great life, <laughs> you know. And uh, but I did get married. You met your wife there? And I did not meet my wife there. Oh. And the owner of the hotel was very disappointed that I would marry someone not a guest from the hotel. Oh. <laughs> so, well, all part of a joke. But she gave us a free weekend there for our oh, nice. anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> what year did you get married? 61. Oh, yeah, 61. Yeah. So after you finished at NYU, except for the dissertation, then did you I, change I, I really job? never finished at NYU. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, uh, I'm the only one that I think went to NYU for 10 years. Uh -huh. uh, as part of the doctoral program, I finished all my coursework. Uh, you have to maintain uh, and take a course which the uh, school made money on. Mm -hmm. So I used to go down on Saturdays. And uh, I had a, an orientation course, which wasn't really much. So I was still going to NYU after I was married. Mm -hmm. And the only positive part about that was I was able to go to Ratner's and pick up a lot of good bread oh, and cake and so forth nice. on the way home. Otherwise, I was very negative, and I still am toward NYU. Oh, wow. You know, uh, <laughs> people I've gone to school with, who went, not to NYU, but to schools outside, had such an easy time of it, as they told me about it. And they got their doctorates in two or three years. Mm. And here I am at NYU, struggling for 10 years. And after NYU, you continued in the uh, Metropolitan um, Insurance? I was there for five or six years. And then someone from Grolier Publishing, which publishes the Americana, right. Encyclopedia and so forth. Uh, got my name from NYU mm -hmm. and offered me a job with them oh. uh, as a in personnel in charge of personnel. Uh -huh. And this individual had six months to make the segment that we were in profitable, mm -hmm. and he did not. Oh, I see. So he was fired. I found another job which was not satisfying. And then I applied to uh, Franklin Square Public Schools oh. and got a job as a school psychologist. Oh, and, nice. And for the students. I, that's where I spent most of my time. For, to, for students? You worked with students? or and The school district is K through 6. Okay. And I worked with students all the time. Wow. Yeah. How long were you there? About 30 years. Nice. Wow. But while I was there, I always had other jobs. So... Uh, in addition? Uh, in addition to oh, that. Doing what? So I had a private practice. Oh. I uh, worked in the Nassau County Drug and Alcohol Abuse. Really? And uh, uh, then without getting into all the details, I was teaching at CW Post mm. and Suffolk Community, mm. both undergraduate and graduate school. What courses were, did you I would teach? basically be teaching psychology, psychology. courses. Wow, that's great. Um, now, how do you feel your experiences in the military affected your life? Really in a positive way. I went in there not knowing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I graduated not knowing where I wanted to go or school or anything of this sort. Sorry, what, when you graduated with your degree in pre-dental and psychology, yeah. What was there? You didn't have the goal yet. You didn't know what. I had to, no goal. You wanted to do. So I went up and worked as a waiter for the summertime. Oh, okay. And right. received my draft notice. Okay. That settled the next two years. Okay. And after that, being in the army, having the experience of being a psychologist in the army, 
after the schooling in the Army, which was excellent, as I said, I decided this is the field I want to be in. I see. Huh. Well, that was, the Army was a help in that way. To help. Oh, the, the Army sort of guided me, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are some life lessons you learned from the military, you think? Hmm. I guess how to get along with all types of different people. Um, I don't know if I really learned anything except the schooling and the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, always work with excellent people. Hmm. Um, the male staff, the, nurse, the nursing staff, and so forth. Um, I never thought of getting married at that time, but I was going with this nurse a long time. Right, right. You were? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, how has your military service impacted your feelings about war and the military in general? I've always been against war. Uh, I see no need for it. I think, you know, if people can negotiate and talk to each other, there's no need for war. I think there was a need in the Second World War mm -hmm. with the situation that was going on. But uh, there's always these uh, senior citizens who are sending off the young men mm -hmm. to war. And this, I feel, is horrible. Terrible, yeah. Um, during Korea, nobody went up to Canada, you know, to avoid the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam, there's a large group that did, and I could understand why they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the wars since then, you know, uh, I, I really have been uh, very anti, anti-war. You have children, right? You had... I have two children. Um, did they serve in the military at all? No, uh -huh. no. Um, gee, they're old. <laughs> uh, my oldest son is 50, uh -huh. and my youngest son is a few years younger. Uh, they both have families. Uh -huh. uh, my oldest son, Mark, lives in Jersey, has a girl 12 and a girl 8. Uh -huh. My youngest son lives in Port Washington uh -huh. uh, and has two sons, a boy 8 and a boy 4. Nice. Very nice. The youngest son is a psychologist. Oh, really? Uh, in uh, personnel and so forth, working for uh -huh. corporate in New York City, basically. And what's the older one do? Uh, he was in finance for 10 years, never liked it. And uh, without his mother or myself knowing it, always wanted to be a teacher. Huh. So uh, went to a load of schooling, has two masters and is now a math teacher in middle school in Jersey. Nice. And loves it. He loves it. That's great. We need teachers like that. That's great. Um, so you weren't injured um, because of no. where you served. No. Is there anything you can think of that you might like to add? Anything you did that you maybe regretted or something we haven't discussed? I would say that that's about it. When I look at the list and I see you know, men that were on the front line, men that were injured and at the VA and so forth and so on. Uh, I feel, gee, I really didn't do much. That's but, not true. No, you did a lot because you helped a lot of vets with their psychological yeah. issues, I'm sure. Yes. Thank goodness they had you. Yeah. And people like you in that position. What message would you like to leave for future generations who might view this video? Uh, just an experience of a uh, middle-class guy. So you were pretty, you were happy in the, I mean, you, you learned and you enjoyed it, kind I learned, of. I learned, I was very happy. The, the Army treated me very well. Treated you well. You hear all sorts of stories, you know. Yeah. But uh, I was lucky. I uh, met a lot of nice people, worked with a lot of nice people. Uh, the officer that was in charge when I worked in the psychiatric hospital in the Army was an outstanding individual, mm -hmm. also lived on Long Island. Really? And I kept in touch with him for a number of years. You did? Yeah. Now, he was also the psychological... Uh... He was a Ph.D. psychologist oh. uh, working in the hospital 
with a staff of uh, privates or uh, non-coms. Mm -hmm. uh, learned a lot from him mm -hmm. and uh, was an excellent guy, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Well, we thank you for your service and all you did, really. It, the Army needs, needs people like you to help them get through, I'm sure. But thank you so much, Hal. Thank you.